latest and greatest from MGL. Oh, great. Yes, it has been a good week and a long and a busy week. Um, we've certainly had our busiest uh, year at Oshkosh here. And our long-awaited 10.4-inch uh, touchscreen EFIS, the biggest in the family of our iEFIS system, was launched at Oshkosh this year. The 10.4-inch iEFIS is part of the family. It can be mixed and matched with its smaller brothers and sisters. It's our brightest screen we've ever done. It's about 2,000 nits of brightness, which is incredibly bright. Like all of the other iEFIS displays, it uses the same push screen system. No one wants to have a screen that they can accidentally touch in flight or accidentally swipe. So you can actually touch the screen, you can rub it, you can be bounce around in turbulence, and you won't accidentally activate a function. To activate a function, you really need to press the screen as if it's a button. So we call it a push screen. So we think that we've helped to eliminate some of the problems of having a touch screen in an airplane as a primary flight instrument. Like all of our other ethoses in the past, this system has multiple screens. We ship the unit with some standard screens that'll be suitable for your aircraft and engine. But like all of our other systems, we have a PC program that lets users literally create their own EFIS and design the screen with whatever inputs they want and to display it in whatever format they want. So for example, you could have an EGT as a bar graph, a dial, a digital readout that takes up the whole screen. So what we try to do with our system is we don't tell the user what they want to see. We tell the user, you can have whatever you want on your EFIS. It's all up to you. If you want to go wild and create something special for a twin engine, for a nine-cylinder radial engine, for a turbine engine, for a helicopter, you can have the information that you want with the MGL system. How do you support the experimental builder? Because it's one thing to build an airplane, it's another to adapt the panel to the airplane, because let's face it, many of us are not electronics wizards. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, well, we're, um, we've been in California for uh, 13 years now, and our sole job is to support our user base. And what we've done is, through learning from all of our previous products and previous experiences with customers, we've created a system that is as modular and as plug and play as you could possibly hope for. So for example, if you look at all of our system devices, each device gets mounted in the airplane in the location that is suitable. And then we have a simple CAN bus harness that plugs into each device. And so you can literally plug the same connector into each one of the devices, and then just string with Molex connectors a daisy chain of our CAN bus wires to all the devices. So for the first time ever, we've got a system where people are actually able to install it completely without having to make a single call to us. Of course, we're available all day, and that's what we do. We, we give support all day long. But the modularity of the system and our, our fantastic CAN bus network makes it super easy to install, easier than ever. I understand a few other new things in the MGL lineup. Why don't you tell me what else is new here? Yeah. We have launched uh, also at Oshkosh our remote comm radio. That's a six and a half watt comm radio. That's exactly the same radio actually as our existing V6 comm radio. It's got a fantastic stereo four place intercom built into it. All the features you'd come to expect, uh, dual watch, scanning. The remote radio is for panels that don't have the mounting depth. So you can get this little remote head for it, which is the controller. And then also like all of our radios, you can control it from the EFIS completely. So where it's convenient, you'd use the EFIS to set a frequency or flip-flop. Where it's convenient, you'd go straight to the radio control and adjust the volume and do something simple like that. This is our upcoming transponder head. We work with the Sandia Mode C transponder and the Garrick Mode S. The Sandia has been the real ticket for us for a transponder because you mount it behind the panel and the EFIS makes it real easy to control it. And of course, we interact with the transponder a lot less than we interact with the radio. So it makes perfect sense to mount that out of the panel. And we, we're making a, a, this control head for the Sandia remote transponder just to add more flexibility to that product. What can we expect?